So if I expect some problems in alignment, uh, what I like to do is to make some markers. Uh, it's basically just if the object is very obvious and it's obvious to see where it's right, left and whatever, then you of course don't need to do that. But if it's kind of similar, you know, then it might be an option to make those for later on to make uh, points to match different chunks, different... Ooh, that's a mistake. It should be here, it should be right there. So I have 530 images. And as you can see, most of them are from tripod up to up to here, I guess. Up to here. And then I have another bunch of pictures, 300, just from handheld. So very different, uh, you know, settings. Of course, with much narrower depth of field. Uh, much more blurry, much worse quality, but I'm trying to get more resolution with those images and I'm trying to cover areas that I couldn't cover just with uh, just standing on a tripod. So sometimes what I like to do is just to import all these things to some I image editing software like Lightroom. Oh, library. This is like... Yeah, damn it. All the images. Lightroom port. So and then idea here is to to recover some shadow areas and 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 some highlight areas. So in general my histogram is not so you know if you look at histogram nothing is clipping and only background white background is clipping in the white in the whites so in my case i don't find that uh, shooting in raw dng nav uh, whatever canon has to offer path whatever format so I'm, i don't really see how it helps uh, if if the lighting and the colors of objects are rather kind of you know don't go to extremes if it were shot in the daylight outside and there would be shadow and and sunlight yeah uh, raw format would be definitely helpful mm, but in some cases I just don't see does it really help I mean shooting two gigs and instead of some hundred megabytes it really it's really hard I mean you have to have really I don't know lots of hard drives I don't so to me it's mostly enough of JPEGs unless there is some specific situation if it's very specific job like here you see it's clipped white background is totally killed there is no info there but do I care about it no I don't so is it really a problem so I'll try just to go to what is it highlights so I can try to recover some highlights though why do I care? I don't really know. But the shadows in this case is much more important because in the in the holes of these black whatever things, I really don't get lots of, lots of info. So most likely I won't get nice definition of inside the holes. Most likely. If I go to any other image, oh, there's sharpness. Where is sharpness? It's not really sharp. It's a handheld shot. You see the depth of field, how terrible it is. Uh, most of your pictures should be taken from tripod or I don't know with oh it's too dark so or 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 you would use some flashlight or I don't know very nice uh, lighting system whoa that's awful should just delete this frame so these are handhelds no don't expect too much out of them but these are tripod shots so these are quite quite okay I might some even get some definition of inside of these holes not everywhere not everywhere for sure but in some cases so I might I mean this is again a controversial part I'm not sure it really helps or it could even destroy I mean unhelp I will do some sharpening here so this part again controversial I'm not sure it's a good idea because I'm changing the existing uh, thing the existing situation with a uh, with algorithm and does it do consistency between two images I have no idea so it's risky so but I keep it just very tiny little low uh, let's export that to the same folder 
how do I make it same folder same folder and we'll just change the name to uh, I'm not sure what's English word I'll just keep something that I understand and I'll keep it JPEG I mean it is JPEG in the bit now so you cannot convert it to anything else <coughs> But again, the question is, do I really need DNG? Do I really need PEF? Do I need, really need NEF? Uh, probably. Depends on the situation. And of course, if you're shooting, you know, some commission, I guess it's always safer, you know, better, because you have a bigger dynamic range. But in my case, actually now I notice that there is some blacks in, in the hive that I would have uh, probably... I uh, would have information in there if I were shooting in in in, in uh, NAF, PATH, DNG or whatever. For highlights, I don't care in this case. My object doesn't have highlights, at least white shiny highlights. Background, I don't care. So it's a question. Of course, it's better to shoot in RAW, but is it always worth it? That's the question because it is more expensive for your hard drive, for your CPU, for everything. So now let's try importing images and we'll try to go not with original ones but with ones created in Lightroom. So of course when we'll have texture we'll probably have to get back to the darker values of the texture. We'll see. I mean now it obviously doesn't look as realistic. But I guess in some ways this shadow highlight removing also helps with, uh, you know, uh, kind of delighting, very automatic and kind of fake delighting. Okay, so let's align the images. Okay, so we finished aligning images and we have a problem. I mean, I have a problem. So I have one component, component, that's how it's called, with 100. 20 cameras here and you see it's all from one side the cameras are can you see the cameras let's make them bigger so you see they are from one side and the other component 230 images it's another side so i have a problem my basically my biggest mistake was the connection between two of these sides was not it just was two big steps when i rotated so we'll try to solve this by making points, how's it called? Control points. And then we'll try to align components together. So basically we do this by finding images that are used in one collection and another one. So let's see here, in one with 120 images, I have image 305. And now I have to find the same image that is being used in this component. So here I found two images that are, if I'm correct, from two different sets. And of course they depict the same thing, this area here and this area here. So what we shall do is we create a point. So control points, create, and we drag the point. What is the maybe this point here? Hop. Now I do again same thing here, and I have two images connected. Now I'll try to find more images and mark same way points like this. Of course, probably should have at least three points connecting one model. I mean two two components, and I just find one more image, dragged it here, and you see. Rail to capture immediately recognized that these images also use the same point. So I'll just add them. And you see it has 0.1 pixel distance, 0.3, so it's pretty okay. But if you have bigger numbers, it means something is wrong. Might be you aligned it not properly, or I don't know, something else. But probably it's not enough of one point. I'll have to work adding more points. So now I have two points. Maybe it's not enough but just quickly show how to align these two if they will work you would go to alignment settings 
and here under merge components only it says no you make it yes and hit play again align images and we see one more group one more component with 400 images so my 200 plus 100 300 plus 100 managed to be aligned you see cameras from both sides which is a success it's enough of two points in some case but I guess the lesson from here is that this point was very important because it was you should try to kind of anticipate the problems you know it will be easy to reconstruct object you know this side and it's always hard to have these harsh corners so again my mistake not you see camera they're not aligned also depth of field also play the role in this so I should anticipate it and I should try to make some points visual points like this so now you see all parts are aligned or I mean much more we have 447 cameras and now we need just to filter unneeded parts Not enough video memory, I just have 8 gigs of RAM. And we go for normal detail reconstruction. And now the usual procedure. Uh, UVs. Oh, how big is our mesh? 50 millions, that's too much for me. I will use 10 million. So simplify one, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's a million, I think. Oh, I mean 10 millions. 10 million, 10 million, that's enough for me. And now we will do unwrapping. Where is unwrapping? Unwrap. So I go for 16K textures. Maximal, I can have more for an unwrap. Now that was quick. And the last step, we do a texture. That will take some time. And we have a model. Looks pretty good.